How to Receive 10 to 20 Checks a Month Like Clockwork by James A. Gardino Sr. Investing for Monthly Cash Flow. I have two websites that complement this book. You might want to check them out. MoneyMakesLifeEasier.com and TenementTrader.com Here we have our publishing rights, all that kind of nice, neat stuff. Dedication, this is for those that are sick and tired of working too much and having nothing to show for their efforts and feeling like there's got to be another way because there always is another way and I'm hopefully here to show you that. Okay, the introduction. Everybody has their hands on money at some point in their life. You have to decide what to do with money. You have to decide how you're going to earn it, all that kind of nice neat stuff. Now, whoever's in charge of your money, if they're not making you at least 25% a year, I'm going to show you how you can do that, make at least 25% or better. Now I'm going to go slow so that you can read some of this also. You can just mute me and then you can just uh, read it yourself. Now, nobody has more interest in your money than you do, so we're going to teach you a little bit of things. So let's start turning your money into a check pulling machine and teach you how to get 10 to 20 checks per month like clockwork. Simple, easy. Okay, as of this writing, it is um, September 28th, 2013. There's over 3,500 companies this year paying dividends. Dividend is nothing more, nothing less than the company willing to share a portion of its profits with you. So, if the company's profitable, they give you some of the profits. Now, this is not something new. This has been around for thousands of years. This clay tablet they found in Mesopotamia or somewhere, uh, it's over 3,000 years old. And the writings in it, once they figured out what it was, was mathematical calculations on interest-bearing loans. That means people have been loaning money and borrowing money for thousands of years. Why? Because they want to start a business. What happens? You lend someone money, they go into business, and they pay you a part of the profits. Profit sharing, whatever that is. Now, again, this was found um, dated from 1288, June 16, 1288. A historical document showing a one-eighth share of the Great Copper Mine, and I believe the Great Copper Mine is in Poland. Now, this thing has been mining since the 9 98. It may have been mining even before then, but it's over a thousand years old. One little spot on the earth, they've been digging copper ore out of this one spot for over a thousand years. It's just mind boggling if you think about it. Talking about going to work every day. Whew. Okay, so the stock market as we know it started back in the late 1500s. In the 1590s, some businessmen got together and they wanted to create the biggest and baddest company that the world ever seen. So in order to do that, what they basically did was go knocking door to door asking people to invest in their company. In return, they would share some of their profits. And that is how the stock market basically started. Now, there have been earlier stock markets, um, even the, the time of, uh, oh, what's his name, that Roman emperor. Even the Ro great Roman days, they had the stock markets back then, but apparently it didn't, it didn't uh, survive the massacre of Rome, so to speak. So the stock market that we know as of today dates back all the way into the 1590s, and it actually opened its door in 16... Um, 1607, the very first stock market was in Amsterdam. Now, the first shares were sold in 1602 for the first company known as the VOC, which we all know is the Dutch East India Company. Now, the Dutch East India Company, those are the big bad boys. They were making huge, huge amounts of money. They averaged 18% dividends per year. Averaged 18% dividends per year. The highest dividend ever was 75% dividend. Can you imagine that? Buying a stock for 100 bucks and every year getting 75 bucks? Whoa, that's just crazy. But anyway, the company lasted 198 years. It finally went under due to corruption and mismanagement. <laughs> Go figure. Two, almost 200 years. Okay, so here is actual copy of the, one of the very first um, shares. It's a 
basically a handwritten share. It's a, the date was the date on this one. Uh, yeah, date 1606. September 27th, 1606. Wow. That's actually in someone's someone's collection somewhere. So anyway, that's, that's the oldest share of the current stock market that we know of. The one you saw early from the 1200s. That really wasn't uh, part of the stock market. That was from, um, what do you call that? Uh, some clergyman back in the 12th century and 13th century decided to trade one of his estates for a share of the mine. So let's get back to our story with the stock market. And here's a picture of the Amsterdam stock market. Like I said, it opened its door in 1607. And from 1602 to 1607, they basically met stockbrokers in uh, coffee houses and they traded stocks that way. And you actually had to meet them that way. So talk about your uh, lack of liquidity. <laughs> wow. Okay, so let's move on. Now, Amsterdam may be the oldest, but it's not the biggest. United States tops it off. That's the biggest and baddest. The New York Stock Exchange is the biggest. The second biggest is the NASDAQ. Then it drops down to Tokyo, London, China. This is all in, in, in size. As you see, Amsterdam is not even on there. Okay, so why do I have the Securities and Exchange Commission in here? Because the SEC, which was formed in, in the 1930s, from the president getting the New Deal in to help people from getting shafted in the stock market from mismanagement, and misreporting, and whatnot. So, in order to avoid another crash or another crash scenario, the president insisted or demanded that the SEC be formed. And these people, the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, they make sure every publicly traded company reports quarterly earnings or quarterly reports to its stockholders so everybody knows what's going on in the company. In, plain, in simple English, if the company is profitable, then they pass the profits on to the investor. What does that mean? If a company is profitable, they're sharing their profits. There's actually two different kind of companies. One is the companies who take their profits and invest it back into the company for future growth. That's not what we concentrate on. We like to concentrate on dividend-paying companies, companies that actually share their dividends with us. So hopefully, these companies are run right, they're profitable, they're taking some of the money and investing it back into the company, and they're taking some of the profits and they're sharing with us. Now, there's a huge misconception on the stock market. The stock market is not the end-all, where-all. The stock market is just a place where publicly traded companies trade their shares. And all these guys you see down here, these are all stock brokers. They trade one company to another company to another company to another company. It really has nothing to do with the companies whatsoever. The stock market is just the place where they actually do the physical buying and selling of each stock. Okay? IBM may be in Washington, D.C. Um, uh, Microsoft may be up in Washington. Uh, Tesla is down in California. Uh, let me think. Uh, Gillette is in Boston. Um, Merck could be in, in Chicago. Uh, Ford is in, in, in... Where is Ford? Oh my goodness, really? Michigan, okay? Chevy's in Michigan. Anyway, companies are scattered throughout the whole United States. The stock market has nothing to do with the companies whatsoever. Okay, let's go to the next. <coughs> hey, Ford Motor Company. There we go. We were just talking about them. Okay, so, out with the old and with the new, why are we buying and selling rather than buying and holding? Buying and holding is the old style. Old style of investing. Buy, hold forever, turn around, sell at some point in time when you need the money. Okay, no, we're buying and selling. Why? Because we want to collect dividends. We want to collect dividends every day. Okay, we buy the stock before the EX date and we sell just after the date of record. That's usually one or two days. You just want your name on the date of record so that you are recorded in their ledger as a person receiving the dividend check. Plain and simple, you want to receive the check after your name is in the, in the ledger for receiving the check, you sell the stock. Preferably for the same amount you paid for it or more. We're going to get a little bit more into that a little bit later on. Okay, and imagine if you will. Every day there's over 20 trading days. Um, 
uh, May 2012, look at this, there's uh, 5, 10, 15, 22 days. Uh, June, 5, 10, 15, 21 days. Uh, July, 5, 10, 15, 21 days. So every month has over 21 days. Now with 3,500 companies, or 3,400 companies trading, I mean, uh, paying dividends every day, and there's only 20 to 22 trading days per month, can you imagine how many shares are actually being um, being traded, or, or being how many yeah how many shares being traded? But then again, how many companies are writing dividend checks? Okay, so let's look at this for a second. Monday, May seventh, two thousand twelve, twenty seven companies were paying out dividends, and the yields were by point three and eight point two. Okay, uh, May twenty eighth, sixty four companies ranging with yields between point four and thirteen percent. May 29th, 96 companies paying dividends. May 10th, 46 companies paying dividends. And look at this one. This is a doozy. I've never seen a day like, like, like this day. Friday, May 11th, there's 332 companies all on May 11th writing checks or going EX dividend. Okay, so that is close to 600 companies just in one week all writing dividends, all profitable. Now, um, this, here we go, the EX dividend date, 8-27-2002. These are the companies paying the, the dividend amount and what their annual yield is. Now, the annual yield is going to be different than what you're investing in. The annual yield is based on buying the stock and holding it for the whole year. That's not what we're all about. We want to buy the stock, before the EX date, we want to buy it on 825, 826, or 824, 823. Anytime before the EX dividend date, collect the dividend, and then after the EX date, you sell it. <coughs> yes, now these companies are sharing with their investors. Um, there's over 500 profitable companies paying out just in the one week of the month of May. Now, you only need to own these stocks one or two days, three to tops to collect the dividend. Now, if you want to hold it and save it from and, and keep from losing any money and selling it for more than what you paid for it, sometimes you might have to hold it longer. Okay, but but this, the main idea is to get more than 10 to 20 checks per month from your dividend investing. Now, the, I, knew, I do know this sounds oversimplified, but it really is pretty simple. Okay, let's look at simple three steps. One, a company pays out dividends when they are profitable. Two, you buy the stock to collect the dividend on or before, I mean, before the EX date. Three, you sell the stock for the same amount of money or a little bit more, and then move on to the next one. Okay, so let's uh, see what else we got here. Now, this guy could be a solution for you. Is what you're looking for. This goes into, you know, uh, pff, the plan. You know what the plan is? The plan is whoever came up with this idea. Okay, most 401s and, and retirement and co-ops and all that kind of stuff. They have some guy sitting behind the desk. He gets paid regardless whether you make money or not. Okay, you're making money, he gets paid. You're losing money, he gets paid. Regardless what's happening with your money, this guy's getting paid. Okay, they sell you a bunch of crap and they do not have your best interest in mind. I am so passionate about the fact that nobody has more interest in your money than you. And it's strange why most people spend more time planning a family barbecue than they do with their personal finances. Okay, so let's keep on rolling. What else we got down here? I like some of these old shares. I like to just get a whole bunch of them and just paste my wall with them one of these days. Okay, here's a blueprint for getting many dividend checks. With each month that passes, you reinvest your dividends, and then your account just goes into high gain, you get more and more and more. Now, Albert Einstein, one of the brightest men that ever walked on the planet, was considered to be the brightest man on the planet, stated the magic of compound interest is most likely the eighth one of the world. That is awesome. So what did I do? I came up with a monthly compound calculator. Now this calculator, you can find the link in the book itself. If not, you can find it over at Money Makes Life Easier. Now what this calculator does is you put in an initial deposit, however much money you want to start out with. You want to start with 10000 you want to start out with 100000 you want to start out with 150000 Great, no problem. The calculator also allows you to make periodic deposits. Now, you can make additional deposits into your IRA or into your investment fund. You do 200 a month. You can do 200 a week. You can do 5 bucks a month. You can do 5 bucks a week. You can do whatever you want to do. Now, 
unlike most compound calculators, this one compounds per month. Most people are under the impression interest is annual percent interest. This calculator does it monthly. Okay, I have it set here at 3% monthly. So the computer will actually calculate how much money you're going to make on the monthly and it compounds it over and over and over again. Now, you basically put the amount you start it with, put your deposit in, and then whether you want it <coughs> deposit monthly or weekly, that's whatever it is. Now, the interest rate, 3%. 3% is not bad for a monthly return. Okay, if you want to be more conservative, do 2% or do 1.5%. Okay, 1.5% is easy to do. 2% is easy to do. Okay, 3% is easy to do. I average somewhere around between 5 and 8% per month, which is not bad. Okay, so moving on. And there's the link right there, compound calculate yourself. Try it out. It's really cool. I also have a weekly compound calculator because they do have um, they do have stocks that trade weekly options. And I made it specifically for that because I wanted to to find how quickly I can multiply my money if I can if I continue if I work like for one year straight and just like sat in front of the computer, how much money could I make? And then could I retire off of that? That'd be great. Okay. Now forget chasing growth stocks. We're going to invest in dividend payers, you know, stocks that pay dividends. The reason for that is it get to a certain point where you just don't want to work anymore and you just want to collect interest off your money. You just invest your money into quality stocks and they pay you dividends every week or every month. And if you arrange it right, you can get a check every week. You can even get a check every day if you wanted to. Because I, don't, I, I honestly don't suggest you to put all your money into one, into one um, what do you call that? into one company. I like to spread it out, you know, 10, 20 companies at a time, always invested. You know, worst case scenario, hey, I'm collecting dividends, which I think is great. Okay, rule two, it's tempting to take the cash, but it's more profitable to reinvest it. Now, don't get me wrong. If you need the cash, take it. But please, just take a little bit of it and put it back into your account so your account is continually growing. If you make a thousand bucks from your investing, you know, take out 900. Put that 100 back into the account so it grows higher and higher. Okay, now it is another calculator. I mean, this is the same calculator, and it tells you how much you're making off of your investment, which is cool. Okay, rule number three. Now here's a bunch of companies right here that are that are trading. This is a 529, 2012. As you can see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pages. Ten companies on each page. Eight pages. Eighty companies paying dividends. Or going EX dividend date on the on the 29th. Now, if you got a choice, take the higher yield. Now, I used to always say take the higher yield, but I'm going to change that a little bit because the the higher yield, you have to be careful that if it's a really extremely high yield, you might get get caught with your pants down, so to speak. That means um, the company may may offer a huge yield just to get investors to buy the stock. And you want to be leery. You want to go check historical records. Is this company historically providing high yields? I mean, are they paying 10% a year every single year? Are they paying 12% a year every single year? Okay, if they're averaging 5% a year and then all of a sudden they're paying out 12, there's got to be a good reason for that. There's got to be a question for that. So you always question it and make sure historical performance is there. And remember, worst case scenario, if the stock goes down to a point where you don't want to sell it and take the loss, at least you're getting whatever the yield is, which is not bad, which is better than the uh, uh, bank CD rates at the moment and definitely better than the um, savings. Sorry, so let's go. Strong history, cash brand performance before. Small cap beats big cap all the time. Why is this? Because a $10 stock can go up a heck of a lot easier than a $100 stock, you know? Because big, huge corporations grow slower than small ones. Because big corporations, you get a huge board of directors and a huge amount of employees. So taking it to the next level is a little bit harder because you got a lot of baggage you're taking with you. Okay, so like I said before, there's 3,500, over 3,500 companies in North America that are profitable and get ready to write dividend checks. Now, this is a little interesting right here. 954 of these companies have dividends over 5%. And there's 158 the dividends over 10%. And only 28 yielding 15% or higher. 
Now the high yields are great. Now 28 companies, if you can get that yield from 28 companies for different times of the year, oh what? Then that you can get <coughs> extremely higher rates. If you get one company, you get it's 15 percent, then another company gets it's 15 percent. That's just two companies. You add it together, that's 30 percent. Okay. Now, great. It's not going to always work that way. But you know, it, it's great in theory. But that's the way it should work. Okay. Uh, the U.S. is not the only company that has a stock market that has companies that offer dividends. You got China, you got Europe, you got Japan, you got Singapore, you got Hong Kong, you got New Zealand, you got Canada, you have South America. All these countries have companies, and they're all basically doing the same thing that they are here in the United States. People get up in the morning, they jump, they have their coffee, they take a shower, have some breakfast, jump in the car, they commute to work, they put their eight to ten hours of work in the day, and they come home to be with their families. All over the world, people are doing this every single day. So you can do this from anywhere. <coughs> Look overseas for higher income. There's 3,500 companies. Over 3,500 do it here in the United States. Now, Europe and uh, Japan and, and other foreign countries, there's a hundred foreign exchanges around the globe. And some of them have higher yields than they do here in the U.S. But that's something you have to do yourself. I just do the American companies because I, I make enough as it is. You know, I don't need to uh, do that. Okay, now, <laughs> rule number six. It's not what you earn. It's what you keep. So avoid paying taxes. Now, I didn't say evade paying taxes. I said avoid them. Now, you can legally avoid as many taxes as you want, legally. I have to reiterate and say that one more time. Tax avoidance is perfectly legal. Tax evasion is not legal. So, you know, there's a lot more I can do like that. Now, Uncle Sam does want his fair share. Don't ask me why. You're the one pushing the buttons. You're the one doing all the work. Why does he get any? I don't know. I don't make the rules. I'm just going to follow them. So, let's go back to... Where are we now? Ooh, I like this. This is an overview of the stock market. Green means it's an up day. Red means it's a down day. Now, these are all the different sectors broken out. You have the uh, technology sector, the financial sector, the services sector, consumers goods, healthcare, utilities, conglomerates, industrial goods, basic materials. Now, the bigger the square, the more shares that are traded. The smaller the square, the less shares that are traded. If it's in a bright red, that means it's down for the day. If it's in a dark red, I mean it's not down hugely, but it is still down. Now the ones with the, like a black or a dark gray, kind of like neutral, not very much movement. Bright green, a lot of movement to the upside. Okay, darker green, up movement, but not a huge amount. Now, <clears throat> make any choices in the stock market for dividends. Probably surprise you first. Blah 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 blah. You can read that yourself. But anyway, what it says is is choosing to invest this way just to collect dividends 10 to 20 checks per month is easy you buy the stock before the dividend before the EX dividend date you capture the dividend you sell it for the same amount or one penny I like to go one penny more if I buy IBM for $100 I'm going to sell it for $100 and one penny and depending on its historical performance, it says whether or not I'm going to be able to do it. I collect the dividend, and then I put in a sell order, and I sell it for the same amount of money I paid for it, plus a little bit of extra to handle my uh, transaction costs, my commissions, and then um, or a little bit of profit. Because sometimes you know you buy a stock, you collect the dividend, and then the next day it it, it it opens up higher, or you get that higher number. That happens a lot. Okay, so where are we? Uh, dividend capturing can and will increase your cash flow, eliminate some worries, some sleepless nights. This information is supposed to enlighten you on how simple and easy it really is. Because it basically is a two or three steps, two or three step message. Okay, so here at Money Makes Life Easier in the 10-Minute Trader, we're consistently looking for ways to simplify the trading secrets that the professional traders don't want the public to know. Now, this trading strategy, buying stocks just to collect the dividends, has been around for over four years hundred years okay there's a companies that have been paying dividends for many 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 years there's one company that I know of right off the top of my head Wells Fargo they have been paying dividends to their investors for over 100 years I'm sorry to say but 
You can't collect dividends for 100 years because most likely you're not going to last that long. But you can buy them, pass them on to someone else, and hey, the company's been paying for over 100 years. They can probably can continue to pay. It's just plain and simple. They did it before. They're most likely going to do it again. It's not guaranteed, but it is highly probable. All right. Anyway, as I said before, there is no one who has more interest in your money than you. Okay, so take control of your money, take control of what you want to do, and, and like I say, simple, easy strategy. Now here's some more books I've written over the past. Uh, you might want to check some of those out on, on the websites that I've given you before. But, hey, this is James from The 10 Minute Trader and Money Makes Life Easier. You have a great day, and I am out of here. Happy trading.